It goes without saying that movies are primarily assembled from shots shot specifically for that film, usually at a great cost and great effort. Yet sometimes, typically in order to save costs, or less generously cut corners, slivers of footage might in fact be recycled and repurposed from existing films. For the most part, this reuse of previously shot material will go undetected by the overwhelming majority of viewers. But of course, there are always going to be those obsessives among us who manage to notice even the sneakiest feat of Hollywood trickery. I'm Jess from War Culture, and here are 10 more movies you didn't know recycled footage from other films. Number 10. Spider-Man's Dream Sequence Lifted Shots from Dark Man and the Beyond while Sam Raimi was editing 2002's Spider-Man, he learned that there wasn't enough money in the budget to create a more visually elaborate sequence for Peter Parker's post-Spider-Bite nightmare. And so he had to resort to repurposing existing footage to his own ends. Most notably, a shot of a synapse is actually taken from Raimi's own 1990 movie, Dark Man, although it's been digitally altered and rotated a bit and there's a bunch of spiders on there now. Secondly, there's a fleeting glimpse of a tarantula from above, which is taken from Lucio Fulci's cult classic 1981 horror film, The Beyond. The crucial link between all three of these films is Spider-Man editor Bob Morosky, who also worked as an assistant editor on Dark Man, and holds the US distribution rights for The Beyond. Raimi credits Morosky entirely with piecing the dream sequence together, even if it wasn't how he originally envisioned it. Given that 99.8% of people who saw Spider-Man didn't notice the shot was recycled, I'd call that a success. Number 9. Back to the Future Part 2's cloud shots were borrowed from Firefox. Back to the Future 2's opening credits are set in front of breathtaking footage of the DeLorean soaring through the clouds in first-person perspective. Though you probably assumed a production as well-minted as this, rocking a $40 million budget over double that of the original, probably just strapped a camera to an aircraft and flew it into the heavens, that actually wasn't the case at all. Instead, director Robert Zemeckis reused footage that appeared in the 1982 Clint Eastwood action thriller Firefox where Eastwood played an American pilot tasked with stealing the titular high-tech Soviet aircraft. Legendary Hollywood aerial cinematographer Clay Lacey shot most of the in-air footage for Firefox, which appears prominently during the film's various dogfight sequences, and was then seamlessly used again seven years later in Back to the Future Part 2. Possibly as a wink to this, but also probably to the Western genre as a whole, Marty McFly actually used the pseudonym Clint Eastwood for the Western-themed Back to the Future Part 3. Number 8. Unstoppable took a speedometer shot from Gone in 60 Seconds. Tony Scott's Unstoppable is an absurdly entertaining, dead simple action flick about two working class men attempting to stop a runaway train. And per the late Scott's typical hyperactive style, it rarely lingers on any one shot for too long. That certainly helped disguise the fact that Scott used a shot from another vehicle-centric action film released a decade earlier, Gone in 60 Seconds. In Unstoppable's climax, Weldon Ned is pursuing the locomotive in his pickup truck, and as he speeds up to reach the front of the train, for a fleeting second we catch a glimpse of the speedometer. However, car enthusiasts might have noticed that this definitely isn't the speedometer of the Ford F-350 that Ned is driving. That's because this insert shot was taken from a scene in Gone in 60 Seconds, where protagonist Randall speeds away from the police in an entirely different car. Number 7. All the money in the world reused a helicopter shot from Black Hawk Down. Helicopter shots are so often used for establishing shots, and they're so generic at this point, they're probably not going to stick in an audience's mind for too long. Nevertheless, while watching Ridley Scott's more recent dramatic thriller, All the Money in the World, some viewers noticed that an establishing shot of Morocco was actually pulled from Scott's own 2001 war classic, Black Hawk Down. This is a clever and interesting use of existing resources, given that all the money in the world's Morocco set interior scenes were actually shot in Suffolk, England, while Black Hawk Down, despite being set in Mogadishu, Somalia, was actually filmed in Morocco. Scott had filmed large portions of his previous film Gladiator in Morocco and evidently had an affinity for the region. And given that, all the money in the world ended up costing $50 million. That is a high price tag for a drama which didn't contain any lavish visual effects, so it makes sense that they'd save some money where they could. Number 6. The Limey repurposed young Terrence Stamp scenes from Four Cow. Steven Soderbergh's terrific 1999 neo-noir The Limey was produced for a fairly spelt 10 million bucks, 
and when it came to assembling flashbacks to the earlier life of Terence Stamp's protagonist Wilson, the ever-creative Soderbergh devised an ingenious way to do it on the cheap. Rather than assemble a shoot with a younger actor who resembles Stamp, Soderbergh instead just dug back into his career to see what he could use. He settled upon Poor Cow, the 1967 feature debut of the legendary filmmaker Ken Loach, where Stamp portrays Dave, a criminal who's sent to prison following a botched robbery. Clips of Dave romancing the film's protagonist Joy and her subsequently visiting him in prison are used to depict Wilson's younger life with his dead daughter's mother and his own stint in the slammer, lent context by Stamp's added voiceover. It's a clever trick because it does certainly feel like we're watching Stamp in those flashbacks. The footage being three decades old at the time and from a movie many viewers won't have seen makes it easy to accept that we're just seeing a young Wilson. Number 5. Fight Club used breath effects from Titanic Now this is where recycled film effects get pretty darn creative, and if anybody's gonna do it, you trust David Fincher to be the one. You probably remember a scene early in Fight Club where the narrator imagines himself entering an icy cave and discovering his power animal. In this case, a CGI penguin that tells him, slide. The narrator's icy breath is visible throughout this brief experience, and while you might freely assume the VFX heavy film simply concocted the breath from scratch in post, this actually isn't true. The recently defunct animation studio Blue Sky Studios, who created the Ice Age films, worked on both Fight Club and James Cameron's Titanic. For Titanic, they created a bunch of bespoke breath effects for when Jack and Rose are out on the water. These effects were actually reused in this Fight Club scene, with the very same animations being imported, manipulated, and tracked onto Edward Norton as he moved throughout the cave. While some online reports claim that Leo DiCaprio's own breath was replicated in Fight Club, this hasn't ever been officially confirmed by the VFX artists. The breath elements were indeed recycled though. Number 4. Six Underground recycled a shot of a house from Pain and Gain Say what you want about Michael Bay, but as mega-budget filmmakers go, the guy has a surprisingly economical sensibility, frequently recycling shots throughout his filmography. You're probably aware that car chase footage from the island was reused for Transformers Dark of the Moon, albeit with 500% more CGI robots, and you probably also know that clips of an aircraft carrier from Pearl Harbor reappeared in the original Transformers. But you might have missed a subtler act of recycling in his recent Netflix action flick Six Underground. Midway through the film, one played by Ryan Reynolds delivers a monologue about his past, accompanied by a dizzying montage of footage. When he mentions cleaning house, we literally get a shot of a house being sold, the very same house that was featured in Bay's 2013 action comedy Pain and Gain. In that film, the exact same house is being used for the scene where Adrian and Robin buy a home, which they then ecstatically roll around in front of. While the specific shot of the lawn is different in that it doesn't contain Anthony Mackie or Rebel Wilson, it was clearly excess material left over from Pain and Gain's shoot, rather than Bay returning to the same location again to capture what is essentially basically a throwaway image of a house. Number 3. Cars 2 Recycled the Jungle from Up Back in early 2020, a post on the movie details subreddit went viral after a user reported that his 7-year-old son had realized that footage from Cars 2 was recycled. Early in the film, we learned that ultimate antagonist Sir Miles Axelrod attempted to circumnavigate the world without using a GPS, as caused him to run out of fuel at a rainforest and be left for dead. The forest locale is actually copy-pasted basically wholesale from the South American jungle scene in Up, released two years earlier in 2009. The precise similarity is best noticed in the scene where Carl throws a tennis ball into the forest in the hopes of losing Golden Retriever Doug. Though Disney has a history of recycling animation in its 2D animated classics, Pixar generally does a much better job of concealing any corner cutting, enough that only a kid who obsessively watches these movies ad infinitum had much of a chance of ever noticing. Number 2. Transformers The Movie Altered Animation from Fist of the North Star If Disney catch all the flack for recycling animations and sequences to save money, then they're certainly not the only ones. Toei Animation were also caught out while producing 1986's Transformers The Movie. The scene where Unicron devours the planet contains a distinctive shot of Unicron going full ham. 
that's actually a variation on an extremely similar visual from Fist of the North Star, another animated film from Toei released just five months earlier. Releasing in the blurry VHS era of 1986 as these films did, Toei presumably figured that nobody would ever notice, or that folks would one day scan through high resolution re-releases frame by frame looking for this sort of thing. But of course they did, and when viewed side by side, the similarities are pretty impossible to dispute. Number 1. Malevolent lifted car chases from The Corrupter and Marked for Death While certainly the least known movie on this list, the 2002 Lou Diamond Phillips starring action thriller Malevolent so brazenly recycles footage from other much higher profile films that it absolutely deserves a mention. Watching this totally pedestrian genre film might give you a strange feeling of familiarity you can't quite put your finger on, beyond it being a totally garden variety actioner of course. That's because in order to curb costs, this 95 minute film is bookended with car chases that are just straight up lifted out of other movies. The opening chase is a chopped up version of the memorable chase from the 1999 Chow Yun-Fat Mark Wahlberg film The Corrupter, and the finale similarly reuses a car chase from the 1990 Steven Seagal vehicle Marked for Death. Hilariously, in the latter case, it's clear that Lou Diamond Phillips isn't even driving the car, and anyone who squints will surely be able to make out Steven Seagal behind the wheel. A lot of people might be complaining about those shady geezer teaser action movies that are being made nowadays, but at least they're not completely pulling scenes from other movies. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other movies that recycle footage which most people don't know about. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're liking, come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more great lists.